Right, good morning and welcome to uh, Garden America. It is six minutes after the hour. Right now we are on Facebook Live only. We've got a... We've got a... Live, welcome one and all. Main along with John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, director, working to make sure that we have a good signal on Facebook Live. Let's see, uh, John at GardenAmerica.com for your questions and comments. And if you uh, also would like to ask a question, make a comment, you can also do that on Facebook Live right there on our Facebook page. Hope you had a good week. It is uh, the weekend. It is Saturday morning. We're in a good mood. Uh, we've got John's mic set up so you can see uh, Tiger clearly, <laughs> see John clearly. Not blocking me anymore. Not Who's blocking that guy Tiger. In the corner? We had a lot of complaints that people couldn't see Tiger, Uh-oh. and I think we lost some viewers because of that. <laughs> but we are back now with uh, a nice shot of Tiger, nice shot of John. And uh, boy, Christmas tree season, Tiger. Mission Hills Nursery. Uh, Christmas I'm, tree season's over. Yeah, it's it, well, it should be right. A little too late to buy a tree, or not? Yeah, definitely too late to buy a tree. Any tree that's left on the lot right now is pretty much a tumbleweed, especially since Southern California had Santa Ana the whole time of December so far. We had winds and uh, obviously those fires and stuff. Yeah. Not not a good couple of weeks for uh, Southern California. Definitely not. And we're late in the season. You need to get your tree up if, if, if you don't have it by Yeah, now. get your tree up. And we talked last week. We had our guest on who talked about how to uh, how to care for the tree. Right. And we do want to clarify something that uh, if you if you cut the tree, it calluses over quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, within hours, I think is what they were saying. So, you know, you always want to give the tree a fresh cut, just like you would a thing of uh, a bouquet of roses, but make sure you get in water right away so it doesn't heal over, and then it won't absorb water at all. That sap is not easy to get water through. By the way, I want to thank the people who are sending the love emojis on, on Facebook. Thank you so much because we do, we do love you too. And uh, we do want you to tell your friends, your family about our Facebook Live. And as soon as uh, we can hook up with a net, uh, network, we will do that as well. But hey, there's always Facebook. You can go to Facebook Live on our page, Garden America Radio. We are right there. You can see us, uh, everybody right here this morning. And that's how we're going to do it until we fix that problem. Uh, John's got, uh, can't talk this morning, so no. he, he's going to do sign language. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, John. How you doing? You know, you know what? You're being very respectful, aren't you, letting us just uh, talk here? Yeah, talk is a nice <laughs> word for it. Oh. <laughs> he hasn't lost his sting, has he? Oh. <laughs> That's our John. We love him. Hey, anyway, I have some news. A, a, big, a big tiger big, news? N- not big tiger news. News in our industry. Um, for those of you that are in high citrus areas, there was just a report that came out that some California researchers found the female pheromone for the Asian citrus psyllid. You got John's attention when you exactly. said female. Exactly. Pheromone. Hor- pheromone. I said yeah. hormone. Pher- go ahead. But um, they were able to identify that, and they're able to produce it, which is a big thing. Asian citrus psyllid is, uh, for California, a Huge. big problem it's been with for all a long our t- citrus industry. For a long time. And um, a lot of area has become quarantined because of it. But um, also, anywhere that citrus grow, it could be a problem. But... Because they've been a- they've never been able to really create a good deterrent for it or a solution for it. It's only systemic insecticides, and so therefore it's nice now to have this pheromone because now they can attract it to sticky flat fly traps, which would then trap and stop the spread of this bug, and hopefully be able to kind of bring that quarantine back in the industry and not and and not close the doors to shipping citrus throughout the state. And who discovered this? They've been working on this, obviously, for quite some time. I I think their research said it was over 14 years, but it was some um, scientists that were based out of Davis, and then there was quite a few other scientists based in, like, Brazil and some other places, too, and they were all able to identify this. Well, you know, Brazil gave us the killer bees, so so they do (laughs) know what they're doing. Did they really? I think it was Brazil, wasn't it, John? The uh, African African Right, right. So what you're saying is they owe us one. (laughs) (laughs) So this will help. Yeah, that was back in 1956. And you know what? You don't hear too much about that anymore, do you? About uh, those bees, Africanized bees. Well, did they did they breed with other bees? Or are they calming it's, down? It's basically basically the United States. It's they've all everybody has a little bit of everybody in them nowadays, yeah. and so the African bees are no different than the what was it the European European bees? I think yeah. Bee and you know, and then not only that, I think that initially there was that scare that that swarms of bees just mowing down cities, kind of a thing. And then after years, we realized that they're just 
a little bit more. They get angry. ticked. Well, they get ticked off. You know, lawnmowers yeah. and noises w- would bother them. Yeah. And they did kill people in in Mexico, South America at first, and it was in Texas, I think, in areas. But I think now they're a little more, you know, yeah. calm and set in their ways. Exactly. So that that is a good thing. John, it's uh, Christmas. Uh, ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I just got an email from a listener who uh, had mentioned the gift pack. On the HP 101? Yes. Which is uh, a huge savings. Uh, if you use HP 101, even if you don't want to get it as a gift, you might as well order the gift pack because you get a good deal. And that'll last a long time, by the way, that gift pack. Yeah. It depends on how many plants you have. Well, I mean, if you're a farmer, maybe not that long, but if you're, <laughs> you know, backyard gardener. But I did want to mention that if you go to GardenAmerica.com and order today or tomorrow, that it will ship out on Monday, so you will get it in time for Christmas. Wow, that's good. How do we do it, volume? How do we, do it? <laughs> <laughs> we do it by uh, me uh, putting together a little package and that's sending very it nice. out. That's very nice, John. Well, we thank you for that. We, don't want, you know, we want you to know that even though we don't see you during the week, we thank you for all you do. Yeah. Hey, you know, you guys were talking about Christmas, Christmas, Christmas trees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm getting my... Uh, my lips are getting stuck together. It's it's the dryness. Well, yeah, and I'm a little under the weather today. I've got uh, I've got this uh, deep sore throat. I don't know where it's coming from. Hmm. Deep, deep, deep throat. within me. Is it a frog or a horse? Uh, it, I don't know, but uh, it it's not pleasant. But anyway, in the <laughs> the uh, newsletter, I wrote an article called "The Collector and the Chris- Christmas Tree." Did you uh, did you read that? I did not read that, but I did see it. Oh. I did see it. Well, I want to, you know, when I go home today, when it's quiet, I want to sit <laughs> and I want to absorb it. All right. Talk, tell us about it. Well, it's about, um, a, when I say the collector, it's about a plant collector, and his name was David Douglas. And David Douglas discovered the Douglas fir. Ooh. And that's where the name comes from. So uh, all the Christmas tr- Christmas trees, holiday trees we've been selling. <laughs> my S's are not coming out the way they should. All the holiday trees we've been selling are thanks to David Douglas. So what do you think about that, Brian? Well, right I, now I'm, I'm in communication with our, our board up back, uh, back east to make sure that we're hooked up to the network. And uh, I think a lot of that. Uh, Douglas is the name, I believe, right? <laughs> <laughs> no relation to the uh, Mr. Douglas no. in Green Acres. What, what about uh, uh, the Douglas Christmas tree? <laughs> Bring uh, it back. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, who's our guest going to be today, Tiger? Jennifer, right? Jennifer Shamber. Shamber? I think is what... Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but one of the topics we brought up a while back was that concept versus natives and what what was termed native ours and its offsprings of natives and are they truly native and you know what what's i never heard what, that term before until until i last... br- brought that up yeah, yeah he mentioned yeah. that yeah that he'd never heard that and you know i think that it's an interesting topic nowadays with all the breeding that's going on of plants mm-hmm. that you know when we have a native plant if you know nature takes its course and makes a different color flower but it's still the same plant, just different color flower, different height that it grows, which right. happens all the time in nature. So why is it that we can't classify these as natives? So mm-hmm. interesting, interesting. So a, nati- a native var native is var, a yeah. variety of a native plant. Correct. That's still a na- the, it's still but, a native, but it's been bred, right? Not been naturally, I guess, selected. So it's kind of. I think I kind of feel like this is like a vegan versus vegetarian thing. Now, is native or is that <laughs> word officially in the vocabulary right now? Is that a, is that going to be a new word that I don't that will be I added? I don't know. I mean, well, you could Google we should it. Call for it him. Webster for that one. Webster. I don't think Webster. He dead. He died a long time ago. How do you know? Wasn't he on that show? Was it Different Strokes <laughs> or what was the name of that show? You know, it's amazing when you have a, a few technical problems. And you kick off a radio show, and how many different directions do you go? <laughs> yeah. Well, usually we have commercial breaks, and we don't, so it's well, very Well, we, sh- we should f- be. According to our, to our board up, right. uh, we are back on the network, so we'll see going into the break. If we hear the music, oh. all, all is good. Oh, And okay. then after the break, we can bring on our guest, uh, Jennifer, who should be ready to go, because I did send the information to him. Excellent. Hey, you know what? This is a good time I don't for see. anyone listening on Facebook. And to, watching on Facebook. Network. And watching is to put in a question, because... 
while we're trying to get this organized, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post your, uh, John is right. Post your questions, comments on Facebook. We, uh, we do peruse uh, Facebook during the show to make sure we answer as many as possible. You can also send your question to John at GardenAmerica.com. So there's two ways of doing it. And, of course, if you still want to use the old-fashioned way, we'll take your phone call if you want your voice heard. And that's 855-424-9825 from uh, BizTalk Radio. Can you believe that next week is Christmas? Is, is it Christmas next week? <laughs> yeah, it's on Monday. A week from this Monday is Christmas. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Christmas 2017, John. In case anyone's keeping track. I haven't done any shopping. None? No. Do you have shopping to do, or are you just not going to do it at all? I don't know. I, not into it this year. You know what? I kind of have that same feeling, and it's just been a hard season to get into Christmas, right? You know what? It seems yeah, like it's it sneaks up. Fire. It's, it sneaks up faster and faster each year. It's the fire and the 100-degree temperatures and the 80-mile-an-hour winds. We're going to take a break. We're going to come right back. Stay with us. Hi, this is gardening expert Melinda Myers. Keeping the environment in mind, I recommend Melorganite Organic Nitrogen Fertilizer for all your growing needs. From plants to people, active growth requires energy, nutrients, and a balanced diet. Nutrient-rich Melorganite feeds the soil and plants for up to 10 weeks. The non-burning, non-leaching formula provides a natural, slow, and consistent flow of nutrients. Trust the fertilizer proven effective for 90 years, Melorganite. Visit melorganite.com for a garden center near you. Do you have a small yard and think you don't have the room for fruit trays? Well, think again. Dave Wilson Nursery wants to show you how to grow great-tasting fruits like peaches, apples, pluots, and much more in small areas, even in patio containers, too. It's called Backyard Orchard Culture. You get step-by-step information via the fruit tube videos at DaveWilson.com. That's where you'll find the closest nursery to you that carries Dave Wilson's quality fruit trees. Start the backyard orchard of your dreams at DaveWilson.com. Are you married? Do you and your husband both have term life insurance? If you both don't, you should. You have a lot to protect. Call now, get a free quote for your husband, and while you're at it, get a quote for yourself too. Because you both need term life insurance. Call now. 800-915-9658 Rates are at all-time lows. We'll shop over 30 top-rated companies to get you the best possible rates. Term Life Insurance, it's the perfect way to protect the quality of your family's lifestyle. You and your husband both need term life insurance, so... Call now for a free quote for the both of you. 800-915-9658-800-915-9658-800-915-9658. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-595-6619. That's 800-595-6619. Again, 800-595. 6619. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, Uh, just quick access to to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-7570. 
That's 800-430-7570. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com. And we are back. Uh, it is uh, Garden America, right, guys? I want to make sure I've got the Garden right America show. Radio show. And uh, it's John, it's Tiger, myself, Brian Main. Thank you for joining us here at Garden America. Facebook Live. Questions, comments right there on Facebook or John at uh, GardenAmerica.com. And uh, you want to do the quote of the week, John? Our guest is ready. Jennifer sure. locked and loaded, and uh, right. we'll get to her. And I did want to mention, even though it's Garden America, we want to uh, welcome our friends from Serbia. <laughs> Who we, are, we have somebody from Serbia watching? Yep, what? watching on Facebook. Well, hey, welcome, Serbia. Thank you so much. We are worldwide, no doubt about it. That's right. Hey, um, okay, so the quote of the week. Um, you have to pay attention, Brian, because it makes you think. Okay, we will do. Okay, people must believe what they can, and those who believe more must not be hard upon those who believe less. I, I do understand that. That's a great quote. Who was that, by it the way? It was George MacDonald. Who, uh, by the way, wrote a great book called, uh, it is a book, collection of short stories. He wrote a number of books. But there's a book called The uh, Gifts of the Christ Child and, and other stories. So if you want to get a copy of that, uh, be a timely season for Very it. timely uh, for this time of year? Yeah. Timely for this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> okay, our guest is uh, ready to go. Tiger, let's uh, let's delve into this. And again, if you have any questions for one of us or our guest, uh, right there on Facebook Live or John at GardenAmerica.com. Tiger? So as one of the new topics we mentioned earlier is this concept of native plants, bringing them into the yard, what their benefits are, and just this push to be able to incorporate plants that are at least familiar with your region. Um, we hit this topic a few weeks ago, kind of touched on it and so we thought we would bring in an expert in this area and so from greenscape gardens we have jennifer jennifer is your last name chambers or chambers yeah chamber okay hello chamber good morning how are you doing good how are you thanks so much for having me today ah thanks for joining us so first before we get started tell us a little bit about yourself and where it is that you work and what you guys kind of specialize in sure so um, I'm with Greenscape Gardens, and we are a garden retail center in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, we work really closely with a regional organization called Grow Native. And Grow Native was uh, was founded probably been about 17 years ago now um, by the Missouri Department of Agriculture, and then later on taken over by the Missouri Department of Conservation as a way to help inform consumers about the benefits of native plants, and they also helped build a platform to make uh, to help increase the demand for native plants, and also supporting growers and uh, and suppliers of native plants and seed. Uh, it's over the past three or four years or so, it's come under the umbrella of the Missouri Prairie Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that helps preserve and also restore native prairies. So the mission overall is to just basically get as many native plants into the ground as, as possible. And uh, that's the mission of Grow Native and our entire network of, of Grow Native professionals. So our garden center has built quite a, quite a large department specifically for native plants. Our native plant, we call it our native plant complex, covers about 5,000 square feet of our garden center. And it is one of the fastest growing departments within our store. So we're seeing really good momentum and support from community partners um, as far as helping to promote these messages uh, about native plants. And now, you know, for, our, for our new listeners and new gardeners, why is it somebody would want to move towards native, no matter where they're at? <laughs> why, well, give, us, give us a few <laughs> reasons. I thought you were going to say, why would anyone sure. want to move to Missouri? 
<laughs> I, and I don't, well, I don't mean I don't that bad at all. Yeah. I just thought that's what he was going to say because uh, there's some great I places brag, in Missouri. I will brag a little bit. <laughs> Let me brag a little bit about Missouri and why we have one of the best, if not the best, native plant program in the country is because of the amazing diversity within this region. Uh, we're here at the, the confluence of the Missouri and the Great Mississippi River. So we've got an amazing uh, number of different types of ecosystems and really great plants that all serve very good functions for us. These are plants, we call them, um, we call them uh, plants with purpose. And so every plant is here for a reason. And so we're looking at ways that we can harness the powers of these, of these plants, whether it's helping to control stormwater through stormwater mitigation type projects, whether it's finding plants that can, that can survive low water usage that have resilience during drought periods, whether it's finding plants that can sequester carbon there's an amazing number of different things that these plants can do. And as we, as we continue to study them and see how they can increase the quality of life for humans and increase the well-being for humans, it's, there's just some amazing discoveries taking place on, on how these plants can really work hard for us. So there is a reason to move to Missouri, Sea Tiger. <laughs> Am I mistaken? Is Missouri the, the show me state? Yes. It is, yeah. Yep. Also Absolutely. has the world famous true. Missouri Botanical Gardens. That's right. That's right. A lot going yes. on in Missouri. So yes, and uh, along with the Missouri Botanical Garden, there's a Shaw Nature Reserve here just outside of St. Louis that is doing really great uh, boots on the ground research on how these plants can really should should absolutely be in more of our landscapes. So one of the reasons why we brought you on the show this morning, and we'll probably be going to a commercial break here in just a little bit, but I wanted to touch on it, was the concept that's going around now where we have these native plants that we've loved and enjoyed for all these years, but now people are kind of creating versions of them. And, you know, it's this this idea, well, are they really that native still if, if they're kind of making these varieties? And so... Where, where do you kind of stand on that topic right now, and where, what's your guys' push being part of these native organizations? Yeah, that's a super-duper hot topic right now within our industry. There's a lot of plant breeders in the world that that's how they make their money is by introducing new cultivars to the marketplace, and that's where the excitement in gardening is, is what are the new varieties? So, of course, there, there, are, there, there is definitely sensitivity with this topic amongst the, the purest native folks uh, within our industry and, and uh, throughout the country. And it's really important that we, that we do keep listening to what they're telling us about, you know, the importance of being as pure to the, the plants as possible. However, there's also a huge power in, in maybe breeding plants to maybe even have more usefulness to us. So maybe we could find ways to increase nectar source sources for pollinators by trying to uh, then breed the plants to be able to bloom longer, or maybe um, increase the, the you know the pollen count within some of these plants to help uh, aid our, our pollinators, or maybe increase berries for birds later on. So there, there's there's definitely good reason to to examine these things. And um, and it's definitely going to be the industry is going to be drawn that way based on the fact that we can make these plants even more resilient. Hey Jennifer, we, we hit the cut in. We're gonna take a break, Jennifer. I'm gonna come right back as we approach 30 minutes after the hour here, at Garden America, on this Saturday morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brian May, Sean Begnasco, and Tiger Palafox. Right back with Jennifer. Stay with us, and thank you for tuning in. Start the business. Getting the word out about your business through a great website can be even tougher. That's why you need spotoutwebsite.com. At spotoutwebsite.com, you can register your company's domain name and even build your website overnight. It's fast, easy, and most of all, it's sure to fit your budget. Spotoutwebsite.com has a wide range of internet products and solutions to make the most of your website, even on a small business budget. Log on today and see for yourself at spotoutwebsite.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 
$1,000 or more in taxes? We can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly, because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-711-6812 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-711-6812. Again, that's 800-711-6812. Hi, I'm Marcia Miller from Mud. Every new parent dreams of bringing their baby home for the first time. But some babies are born too sick or too soon to come home right away. That's why Mud Pie supports the life-saving research and programs of the March of Dimes, the leading nonprofit organization for pregnancy and baby health. Help us give every baby a fighting chance so that more babies can come home healthy. Learn how at marchofdimes.org. How old are you? 25, 35, 50 or older? If you have pain, we can help. Do your knees hurt? Ow. Let me ask you again. Are your knees killing you? Oh, yeah. Are they ever? What about your back? When you bend over, does it feel like this? Mm. How about when you get out of bed in the morning? If you're like me, your knees and back feel like this. Oh, that hurts. I found a company called the Pain Relief Hotline. They specialize in ways to treat your knee, back, and neck pain without surgery or taking medications. The good news is if you have insurance, you may have little or no cost or out-of-pocket expense. I've used them. It works. Call the Pain Relief Hotline now for free information. 800-303-4607. 800-303-4607. Call now. 800-303-4607. That's 800 800- Three zero three four six zero seven. National Funding Group has just released one hundred million dollars in easy access small business funding to businesses that gross at least one hundred thousand dollars a year. You can have fast access up to five hundred thousand dollars in new business capital in as little as forty eight hours. Think about the ways you could grow your business if you had up to a half a million dollar cash infusion. Call a NFG funding expert now. The process is easy. It only takes about five minutes. Then our management-owned lending team looks at your application for a fast approval. You can get 100% funded in about two days. If you need up to $500,000 in working capital to run your business and you gross at least $100,000 a year, call NFG and apply today. 800-296-1564. 800-296-1564. That's 800-296-1564. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets. Secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-935-0752 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you a copy of The Number One Mistakes Retirees Are Making With Their Investments Today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-935-0752. That's 800-935-0752. Employees of J.D. Melberg Financial have the appropriate licenses for the products they offer. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825. Or john at gardenamerica.com. 
And we thank you for uh, waiting uh, during the break. Uh, back with us here on uh, Garden America Saturday morning. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. At 35 minutes after the hour, 855-424-9825. I know we've had some audio problems, which we are working on right now. So uh, do bear with us as we continue with our conversation now with Jennifer Tiger. Yeah, as we were going to break, one of the things we were commenting on was Jennifer was saying breeders that are taking these native plants and enhancing them in some way, whether it's like uh, whether she was saying more flowers, better fruit production, uh, you know, maybe growth tolerance or something like that. And, and kind of the direction where native societies are going, whether they're embracing these changes that are actually enhancing the landscape to some degree or the truest that want to stick to leave, leave it alone, leave it alone, keep yeah. it the same because that's why it's native is because it sure. developed here by itself. Um, Jennifer, are you still with us there? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, good. That is Perfect. good news. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so go ahead and continue, um, you know, on your, on your guys's thought process, as far as these societies, where people are, where people should be going or what people need to watch out for or what they can do. Sure. I think probably our approach to this is, is generally this. If, if a native plant, a straight species native plant will work for a particular application, then that would be the preference is to let mother nature, let things evolve. And as things change and climate changes and as, as, as different environments change, um, mother nature ha- is very intentional in what she does. So, so let's, Let's stick with that if possible. However, there's going to be times where a native plant, a straight species native plant, might be too large for a location, say someone's small home garden. And so people could then look at other what we call cultivars, or uh, nativars, sorry, nativars, cultivars of native plants that would fit the description a little better for what people are needing in smaller space gardens. So, so we start, you know, looking, examine it, look at native species, straight species. If, if there's something that doesn't work, then look at the native bars. Um, and then as, as we see what needs there are for, for, for gardeners or for, you know, large landscape applications as well, um, maybe consumers then can start driving breeders towards making better choices on what to breed and how to um, – you know, create plants that are going to be better for our ecosystem as opposed to just coming up with a new color of petunia. Or yeah. <laughs> so, so we want to get excited about the purpose of the plants as opposed to just the plants being thought of as something that's aesthetic. And moving forward, our industry, the horticulture industry, move more towards a permaculture type model where horticulture by definition is basically – you know, the study of ornamental plants. We want to get away from just looking at plants as being ornamental and beautiful. We want to look at them from a, from a very functional standpoint. And, and that seems like would be a healthy direction for, for all of it to go. And, you know, I mean, when it comes to that concept, I, I think in John, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but you know, a lot of people are using the more compact plants, the, 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 the smaller versions of a lot of these things. And it's because they want to fit them into their yard and they want to fit them into what they have because they like the plant. They, they want to incorporate it. But the 12 foot tall toy on just because it has red berries isn't going to work in everyone's backyard. So I've seen this movement to kind of bring plants smaller, workable spaces. Well, yeah, as we move into sure. urban and suburban areas, we don't have as much uh, land to work with as generations past used to have. So so smaller sizes are important. But, you know, I was thinking um, that for the purists out there who do want the original species, I don't really see that much of a conflict with those uh, who like the new varieties of the native ours because... They're mostly uh, propagated vegetatively. Mm-hmm. So if they're going to be propagated vegetatively, they're not going to be breeding and affecting the native populations. Yeah, that's true. That's something to consider. Yeah. And you still have those native plants anyway, yeah. but you're not getting rid of them. Mm-mm. No, definitely and won't be getting exactly. rid of them. And that's where the, that is where the purists, though, will argue, though, that you know, by, by, by vegetatively propagating, 
that's going to decrease the plant's natural, um, mm. e- you know, evolution. You know, if we're yeah. cloning them as opposed to um, uh, other other methods. It would we're not going to see the diversity of the plants evolve naturally. And so that's where I guess you know the the, the purists would say the danger lies mm-hmm. if we're all growing um, the exact same plant because in a purist standpoint, it's ecotypes is everything so every region's plant is going to have it might you know they might be the same species of plant but it's going to vary by the location where it has you know where it's been growing forever and so those local ecotypes do come into play quite often in um in uh, you know like landscape architects quite often will specify this plant material needs to come from this county or this region or it'll be rejected Mm. so it's basically trying to prevent say all of our native grasses to be grown and propagated in florida um you know where conditions are really great to grow and propagate grasses but but we want to see diversity and that's what's really great though is the fact that every every um every region should have a its own like treasure trove of of native Mm. we can't depend on you know huge corporations to produce, you know, a whole bunch of plants for everybody across the country. We want to have that diversity. So that's where the this, this topic gets pretty interesting and in how we can maintain the integrity of local ecotypes. Hey, so Jennifer, one of the things I wanted to ask you was when it comes to the natives out there in Missouri, what are some of what are some of your favorites now? Now that you've kind of touched on the topic of natives versus native Rs and and where they're going, what are some plants that you look forward to people incorporating? And then, you know, what are their benefits? Yeah. So I would say by far our number one selling native plant is, is milkweed. Mm. The, uh, the entire genus of Asclepius. And uh, that is due a hundred percent to the uh, interest in the monarch migration, the, the migration of the monarch butterfly. And so that really has helped spur a lot of interest in, in natives in general is because of of milkweed. I would say I would credit that plant for increasing our native plant sales um, in up to about 30% for the past five years, what we're seeing our increase in native plant sales. And we're, we're going to attribute the majority of that to milkweed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also some really great programs. Um, Grow Native here in our region, we have a, a program called Pollinator uh, buffet and it's a selection of native plants that have been chosen specifically for having long lasting blooms throughout the season so things that are going to be good for early season foragers um like a uh, senecio obaveda it's our uh, golden ground gold plant so it's really early blooming for those early pollinators and then that that program takes you through into the summertime with with uh with different like slender mountain mints and things like that and then ends the season with our great late blooming things like some of the the small golden rods and asters so really looking at the the timing of when things bloom so that we have a wide range of time for for pollinators for foraging so those are definitely been some of our most popular uh plants uh is, is definitely things that are beneficial to pollinators awesome hey well i just want to thank you very much for joining us this morning such good info something to think about and thanks for those wonderful tips as far as varieties of plants uh if people want to get more information greenscapegardens.com is that for more information to be able to again contact you guys yeah yeah you can uh yeah greenscapegardens.com and also grownative.org it's a great website to check out that has a really great database of native plants All right. Well, you have a good rest of the weekend and have a Merry Christmas coming up and enjoy your Saturday. You too. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you, you, Jennifer. You know, a lot of great information. She was good. You know, I want to make sure people understand that we're not getting rid of native plants. We're we're developing uh, another subspecies right alongside it. So those native plants will always be there, correct? Yeah. Yeah. They're not going away. Right. Exactly. You know, if it it comes down to it, the, the, I mean, you know, the one of the, we, plants I see this in the most in, in California is Ceanothus, California lilac. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I believe it probably had a handful of native, true native varieties, 
But nowadays, you see hundreds of varieties, and they all consider them to be native Cianothus, but they're definitely right. been bred around. And- okay, we've got a couple of questions we want to get to on Facebook Live uh, once we come back from the break. Uh, I think a couple of Christmas tree questions, uh, Tiger, we can address. Right. Anybody else on Facebook Live want to uh, give a question or comment? Right there on Facebook Live or John at GardenAmerica.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is our number one, by the way. I'm Brian Main, John Begnasco, Tiger Palafox. And a step aside, we are coming right back. It's bare root fruit tree season, and you probably have a million questions. Which fruits will grow well here? What are the tastiest fruits? How do I care for them? The answers, they're just a click away with the informative fruit tube videos at DaveWilson.com. That's Dave Wilson Nursery, the nation's largest grower of fruit trees for the backyard garden. They have planting tips, taste test results, and links to nurseries in your area that carry Dave Wilson fruit trees. Your harvest to better health begins at DaveWilson.com. Do you have insects on your roses? Do you have boars damaging your trees and shrubs due to stress or the drought? This is Tiger Pal Fox with Garden America Radio. Fertilome Tree and Shrub Drench is a great product that will give you season-long protection against many insects. Fertilome Tree and Shrub Drench can act as a preventer or a curative for insects that suck, chew, or bore on your plants. This may be the easiest product to use. Simply measure, mix in a bucket, and pour around the base of the tree. One application can last up to a full year. Protect your trees with Fertilome Tree and Shrub Drench. Find it at your local independent nursery or Fertilome.com. Do you have an old car sitting in your driveway? How would you like to learn a hassle-free way to get rid of it, help kids in need, and get a great tax donation in the process? It's real easy. One simple free call to our car donation hotline is all it takes. Call the Nishama Foundation at 800-721-6723, 800-721-6723. We'll come pick your car up for free and give you a tax donation for the full value of the car, running or not. The value of your unwanted car will go to help kids in need. It's fast and easy. Just call us and your car will be gone and on its way to helping children in 48 hours. And you get a nice tax deduction. Call the Nishama Foundation now to get rid of your car, help kids, and get a tax write-off. Call 800-721-6723. 800-721-6723. 800-721-6723. That's 800-721-6723. 23. Are you struggling with addiction or alcohol problems? If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-547-6533. 800-547-6533. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-547-6533. 800-547-6533. 800-547-6533. Hey, travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right, call, because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. 855-325-1769. 855-325-1769. That's 855-325-1769. Investing is a long-term process. How many times can you think of in the last decade that the stock market has destroyed retirement funds for people just like you and me? For your existing IRA, you need the security that gold has provided for centuries. Remember, gold has never been worth zero. 
Capital Gold would like to introduce you to the Home Storage Gold IRA. It's a self-directed IRA set up with all the protection and tax benefits of an LLC. But the big difference in this IRA is you invest in gold and you hold it in your possession. You can't do that with stocks. That's security. You can transfer any type of IRA hassle-free in days. Please call right now and learn more, and we'll waive the $500 setup fee and give you a free safe to store your gold. Call 800-223-0092. 800-223-0092. 800-223-0092. That's 800-223-0092. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825. Or john at gardenamerica.com. You know, sometimes it is better to have headphones on when someone's talking yeah. and you don't yeah, have to yeah. hear them. What? What did you say? Hey, we are back. Thank you so much uh, for uh, being right there, watching us on Facebook Live and on uh, Biz Talk Radio, Garden America, Tiger Palafox. I'm Brian Main. John Bagnasco at uh, 855-424-9825. Also, John at GardenAmerica.com. And we have Facebook uh, Facebook questions, I should say. Yeah. First of all, John did say to tell Dana to put the wreath in, in uh, the bathtub. Yeah, give she it, was wondering how to revive give it her, a good soaking. her right. Christmas wreath. Right. Yeah, that John brought us. That was he was so generous. Look that is your that. wreath, John. So thank you. So uh, Dana, take the wreath, put it in the bathtub, and give it a good soaking, and yep. uh, and they should. Yeah, do. let it just let it sit in the bathtub for a couple hours. That'll help rejuvenate it. Yeah, a couple of hours. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What a deep soak. Or if you're, she soak. wants to take a long shower, she could put it around her head. <laughs> Wear take for a, a shower hours. with it, but no. that'd be a long shower. <laughs> Nothing like a good soak, huh, John? That's right. Yeah. Got to get a good soak going. Hey, Rick had a Christmas tree question, uh, Tiger. Yeah, he was wondering how long it takes to grow the average tree. And I'll go ahead and say, I'll just make this out there for everyone, is that the average tree is seven feet tall, and it takes seven to eight years to grow that tree. So they it's grow about a foot a year. About a foot, a year. but but then it changes because after that, eight nines, nine ten trees. Mm -hmm. Now it's two years for a foot. Oh. So at that point in time, a ten foot tree could have taken somewhere in twelve to thirteen years to grow. That's why, and they it become, depends on the type of tree. Yes, right, yeah. But that's why they become exponentially more expensive. Is because the first years are always fast, and then after that, it starts to slow down, and uh, it's harder to get those trees. Uh, later on. Because... A lot of things people don't take into account when they're buying a Christmas tree. No. Why is no. that so expensive? How come that one's cheaper? What about this one here? Yeah. And and just because it's taller does not necessarily make it more expensive? Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Well. Yes, it does. It does, <laughs> does it? It does, that does oh, yeah. play you into mean, it? Right. Well, depending upon the variety, depending right? Depending on the variety. Yeah, yeah. that's what just, I mean. You know, but for it, instance, a tall, eight, uh, an eight, nine foot Douglas will run you eighty dollars where an eight nine noble will run you a uh, hundred and sixty or something you know i mean it's john going back in yeah. time what's the cheapest you remember christmas trees being 25 bucks for the average when i worked at frank's nursery in detroit <laughs> and we used to Those sell christmas trees. between 10 and twenty five thousand trees per store wow it was all christmas trees 399 your choice from three foot to eight foot three it didn't matter how how high 399 your choice 399 three foot to eight foot wow that they, was also well that's back when cars were two grand new yeah and and that's also <laughs> bread was a quarter yeah. what, what kind of trees cents. were those those were uh, all scotch pines all scotch pines which right. which in that region probably were growing along the side of the freeway <laughs> and the christmas tree program was probably part of like a brush clearing system that they had mm. that they just gathered those trees as they cleared out Decrepit uh, areas. They had Chris. They all had tree farms. <laughs> hey, John, we've got a much better view of you on Facebook Live right now. We've got to remember that uh, how we've got that microphone set up now because you've just made this show a lot better. Hey, yeah. I was looking. <laughs> I was looking that uh, there was some information that Rick put online for us about Pseudosuga menzii, mm -hmm. which is the scientific name for the Douglas fir. Mm -hmm. And I just learned that from you, by the way. Yeah, and. Um, Pseudosuga, I was telling Tiger, means false suga. And suga, of course, is the Canadian hemlock. So of kind course. of like a false hemlock. 
And then uh, Menzies, is, I think it's probably named after Archibald Menzies, who was a Scottish uh, doctor, surgeon, and uh, botanist. botanist. So since David Douglas, who discovered the tree, was Scottish, plant explorer, probably named it after him. You do read a lot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have probably four or five books on plant hunter, hunters at home. And we uh, took a tour one time to England in Scotland. Some of the people uh, that are on Facebook today went with us. And we visited the plant hunter's garden in Pitlochry, Scotland. So you got a lot of this information back there. Doesn't this sound like an A&E show? <laughs> the, the plant hunter? The plant hunter. They've, they've got everything else on there. You know, American pickers and everything else. Right. I think the plant hunter would be a great show. Hey, you know, um, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but second hour. Uh, it's open phones and open questions. That's what it is. Okay. We gave, last week, we gave out uh, some of these games, Who Knows the Rose, that were donated to us from Heirloom Roses. Yes. And I did send those out this week, so hopefully the people that won last week already have them. And they're perfect uh, just in time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas. And so we have two more that we'll give away. Okay. And what we'll do is um, I'll send those out on Monday to the winner, so you will get these in time for Christmas. Okay. But rather than rely on us, you can also go to heirloomroses.com and order your own. Sure. <laughs> if you want. And but, how, how are we going to give those away next hour? We're going to have to – we'll discuss we'll it figure that out during the break. At the break. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Any, we uh, did, we you, make someone say pseudo-sugos manzii <laughs> pseudo five sugos. times fast. <laughs> I like the comment that says, Isaac says, good morning, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, that's my son. Yeah, he's two. I didn't know he could write yet. Is yeah, he two or amazing. three? Is he two you, or three? You know, that new technology, he's two. I, I think his grandma typed that <laughs> in for him. I think it's just good homeschooling. You're doing a good job, yeah, Tiger. He's watching on his iPad. Do, do you have any uh, email questions, John, by the way? John at Garden No, I did get a thank com. you from Dana, though. said she's on her way into the shower with the wreath. <laughs> well, that's great. So, yeah, a couple of hours, or as John says, take a shower, put it around your neck, but make sure it's a long hey, shower. I also wanted to mention, since we were talking about the trip that we just, uh, or that we took a few years ago to Scotland and England, we do have a few spaces left on our trip that we're going to take next July to England, and we're going to the Hampton Court Flower Show. Amongst other things. My, and the Cotswolds uh, out in rural England, which should be really fun. And there's still time to join us. And what a great uh, gift that would be, huh? Absolutely. Hey, all this is available on our website, GardenAmerica.com. That's right. where you want to hang out uh, during the show as you're watching or uh, during the week. And we've also got uh, a lot of things on sale, too. Uh, yeah, you know, Monday is also the last day to order the, um, uh, the Garden Gators tote that uh, you can use for collecting weeds, cleaning up around the yard. And I think we have 30, 33% off on that. Mm -hmm. Not positive. I but... think it's 33. You mentioned that last week. Yeah. So, But Monday's the last day to order that. Then it goes back to regular price. Okay. And I think that if you order by Monday, I'm pretty sure you'll still get that in time. Wow. Excellent. The... Okay, the music, means, the music means it is break time. We've got news coming up top of the hour on many of these fine BizTalk radio stations. We are back, of course, on Facebook, Facebook Live. Stay with us, a chance to win those uh, Rose games. We've got how many, John? Two or three? Two. We've got two of those, so stay with us for that. Uh, also, John at GardenAmerica.com, questions, comments, or Facebook Live, questions, comments. Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. We are back at six minutes after. Thank you for your patience. Do stay with us. The opinions you hear on Biz Talk Radio are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of this station, Biz Talk Radio, its management, or advertisers. The information on Biz Talk Radio does not constitute a recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or service. If you have any questions about Biz Talk Radio, contact us at 817-274-1609 or at biztalkradio.com. Biz Talk Radio. USA Radio News with Ron Taylor. 
in Jerusalem, you've got the parliament, you've got the president, you've got the prime minister, you've got the Supreme Court. So why shouldn't we have the embassy there? U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley defending President Trump's decision to declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Haley tells CNN State of the Union that in time, the move will prove to be the right decision. The United States acknowledges that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem and saying also that the embassy is going to be moved to the capital just like it is in almost every other country. President Trump says the U.S. will move its embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. Senator Bernie Sanders wants to see what Robert Mueller comes up with before considering whether President Trump should be impeached. Appearing on NBC's Meet the Press, the Vermont Independent says if Mueller brings forth the clear evidence that there was collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, I think you have grounds for impeachment. But I think jumping the gun does nobody any good, unquote. You're listening to USA Radio News. The holidays are a wonderful time of year, made even more wonderful when you're able to get all your packages out on time. So this holiday, ship them at Staples and get 10% off UPS shipping services. Staples is open seven days a week and has all the mailing and shipping supplies you need. Staples. Shop, ship, smile. And right now, get 10% off UPS shipping services. Valid through 12 30 17. Exclusion supply. See associate for details. Hey, it's Brandon. For years, I couldn't get to sleep. And then I found my pillow, and my sleep trouble went away. My pillow works, and if you care about getting a good night's sleep, you'll get one today. Go to mypillow.com or call 800 951 8175 and ask for the radio listener special. Use promo code USA, and you will now get 50% off of two My Pillow Premium Pillows and two Go Anywhere Pillows. Call 800 951 8175 or go to mypillow.com and use promo code USA to get this unbelievable offer. Don't lose another night of good sleep. Attorney General Jeff Sessions says violent crime is still on the rise in the U.S. Speaking at the Justice Department yesterday, Sessions noted a spike in drug-related violent crime. There can be no question that drug trafficking is inherently a dangerous business. Sessions said 40 additional violent crimes prosecutors will be deployed in crime hotspots around the U.S. They will work out of a U.S. attorney's office. Sessions said curbing violent crime is one of President Trump's top priorities. Fire crews are heading into their 13th day battling the Thomas Fire in Southern California. The fire continues to burn and has scorched over 256,000 acres, but is now 35% contained. Fire officials say it will be weeks before they can reach full containment. Over 8,000 firefighting personnel are on the scene dealing with the fires. This is USA Radio News. If you are sick and tired of seeing NFL players disrespecting the flag by kneeling during our sacred national anthem, then you need to show your American pride and appreciation for the Stars and Stripes. Let everyone know that you understand and appreciate what the flag and anthem represent to our country. You can do this by wearing a Stand for the Flag and Kneel for the Cross t-shirt from Patriot Depot. Go to PatriotDepot.com backslash stand and kneel to get yours today. Don't forget to use coupon code USA Radio to save 10% off your entire order. T-Mobile will be launching TV service next year. The nation's number three wireless carrier says it's purchased cable TV startup Layer 3 TV to help it roll out some upcoming services. T-Mobile has released few details but promises to address consumer complaints such as sky-high bills and exploding services. President Trump was the main speaker at a major law enforcement gathering together Wednesday night. The President of the United States has your back 100%. President Trump saying that's his message to all law enforcement officers in America as he spoke at the FBI Academy's graduation ceremony at Quantico, Virginia today, also discussing the need for immigration reform. We want a system that puts the needs of American families, taxpayers, and security first. For USA Radio News, I'm Chris Barnes. Over 100 million Americans are expected to travel for the year-end holidays this year. AAA is forecasting about 107.3 million Americans traveling away from home, the most on record during the year-end and holiday period from December 23rd through January 1st. That's 3% more than last year. Most will be most will be driving to their destination. AAA says traffic is likely to be heaviest on December 20th and 21st. It also expects to help nearly a million people with roadside problems ranging from battery trouble to lockouts and flat tires. Make sure you join us online for more news and more headlines at usaradio.com. I'm Ron Taylor, and this is USA Radio News. When did your light bulb go off? 
We're talking about that idea you have for a new product or app. Listen, if you want to make your idea a priority, but you don't know how to get it off the ground, you call Davison, the one company with over 25 years experience and exclusive process that turns ideas into products and apps that are found in retail stores and online. Our team has helped tens of thousands of people just like you. Call now and ask for our free idea starter guide. We'll show you how to securely get started and protect your idea. Whether you have a patent or not, our process will get your idea ready to get in front of a corporation. Don't let your light bulb of an idea go out. Call Davison now for your free idea starter guide. Davison charges fees for services. 800-213-9256. 800-213-9256. Again, that's 800-213-9256. Welcome to the Garden America Radio Show, the country's most listened to gardening program. This is your chance to talk about gardening, horticulture, landscaping, in fact, anything that has to do in the world of gardening. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825. Or send us your questions and comments to john at gardenamerica.com. Now, here's Brian Maine, John Bag Nasco and Tiger Palafox on Biz Talk Radio and the Garden America Radio Network. Welcome to hour number two. Welcome to all of our listeners. Uh, welcome to our viewers on Facebook Live. We do appreciate you being right there with us. It is uh, 855-424-9825 if you want to ask a question uh, via the telephone, as we uh, used to do uh, so much of the time, or John at GardenAmerica.com. A lot of people uh, prefer Facebook Live as we interact with each other. Uh, questions, comments, you can even talk to each other. Uh, good first hour, great uh, information. Uh, we talked uh, last week about Christmas trees. It is that time of the year. So anything on your mind, uh, you can take it in any direction. We'll do our best to uh, answer your questions. And this hour is open phones. I should say open email, open Facebook, because no yeah. guest is scheduled. Right. So it's, it's time all, to answer those questions. It's all up to you. Keep the show rolling with those questions and comments, because, uh, again, we are guest-free this hour. John's a bit under the weather, but he said I can hang in there for one more hour. Awesome. <laughs> so what a trooper. We're, we're going to let him go after the hour to uh, <laughs> relax and uh, get better. Well, you know, we took that whole break and uh, a lot of discussion on how we were going to give away these uh, two games the and yes i think we're gonna end up using brian's idea which was <laughs> you want me to tell people <laughs> I'd, li I, I, I'd like you to tell people because we haven't heard enough from you uh this show okay so we have two two games and they're called who who knows the rose and they're matching games like uh concentration we used to call them concentration right? right and what you get is 50 different varieties of roses and you turn them upside down, obviously, and then flip them over two cards at a time, try to get a match, and whoever gets the most matches wins. Now, the right? key to this is when you flip over a card and don't make a match, and you continue to play the game, you and then you, and you find that was. same card someplace else, you have to remember where it was the first time you flipped it over. Right. So last week, the game that we played, or the contest we had, was because it was during the wildfires, John had said, whoever can name a rose with fire in the name related somewhat related, related yeah, to fire related to fire right. and, we, and gave, we we gave away three of them we gave away facebook facebook a email, email and then and a the phone. listener and the phone right yeah correct so right, you exactly. could you could phone you could uh, answer on facebook so do we only have two or time? email so this time we only have two so we're going to do facebook and email facebook and email All shall right. we what do you think john Let's do Facebook and phone. You want to do phone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Facebook and that's fine. Okay. That's good. This because is it takes, uh, if you do it to the phone. The first then, caller. Yeah, it's the first caller, obviously, but it gives everybody a chance. Right. Yeah. And some people don't have Facebook. Right. Right, that's true. So, that's or true. a computer. Yeah. So this way they'll have a chance. Okay, now, okay. We, as far as Facebook, we're going to take the first answer we see on, on, on our comments. Facebook page. Right, yep. so if on you're the, the first one. And, and you'll know it, that's very fair because everyone can see who the first one yeah. will be. Right. And we're going to start answering right now. <laughs> yeah, there's no way <laughs> to cheat on that one, yet. right, Brian? We have, what's that? No way for us to cheat on that. No, no cheating. Now we have to it's think, right there for everybody to see. And figure then the out next how we're going to do it. Is the phone, but what's the phone number that people should use? That, I'm glad you asked, John. That phone number is toll free, by the way. It's 855 424 9825. Again, that's 855 424 9825. 
uh, the first one in when we ask the question. So it's Facebook and it's uh, the telephone. Yeah. All right. So what by the way, we... I think the I'm not positive, but I think the cost of these games is like twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine. Correct. And yeah. they're going to be flying the out the door. The price is right. <laughs> that's a different game, but that's okay, Tiger. That's right. Okay, so how do you want to Tiger can give... play that while everyone else is playing? How do you want to give the these away, John? All right. So one question, and the first person again to put it on Facebook or to call the mm-hmm. number that Brian just gave. And we were talking about the Douglas fir last hour, right? Yes, it was we dis- were. Discovered by uh, David David Douglas, and we mentioned how the uh, species or the genus name was Pseudosuga, which in English translates to false hemlock. Okay, keep it right? keep it simple now. <laughs> keep this simple. Okay, but the the um, species name was Menzii. So all I want to know is who was the species named after? Do you remember that, Tiger? No, I'm Googling it. Well, you guys <laughs> avoid where, no. as Brian would say, void where prohibited anyway. Okay, so uh, present that question again to make right. sure we uh, who understand. Who is the species of uh, Douglas fir named after? Okay. Not David Douglas, but it's Pseudosuga menzii. So. Okay, which is the pseudo name. So where does Menzii come from? That's okay. What we where want does to know. that? Yeah, where does that come from? So eight five five four two four nine eight two five or Facebook uh, Live on the on the page as everyone is uh, talking back and forth and asking questions. And these cost about ten to fifteen dollars to mail out. So if nobody gets it right, we we save around thirty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Put that back in the piggy bank, right? There you go. No, I, I would say that if nobody gets this, then we'll just start to dumb down our questions. <laughs> I think, no, it's a good question. It is a good question. A question. No, absolutely. Somebody was listening and remembering. This is a great person who remembers for the memory matching game. Oh, that's oh, yeah, right. That's right. Look at that. You, so not only are you getting a good game, but you'll be good at this game. Yes, you will. There you go. John so already far, gave us. So far, it doesn't look like anybody would be good at the game. <laughs> Nobody on Facebook is answering. I mean, now, we do have people that are joining us probably, too, uh, for the first time. that they, they were not here during hour number one. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh oh. So there. So if nobody gets it, we'll come up with another okay. question. That's all. All right. We just want to see if anybody from last hour, uh, you know, how it's kind of a, to see how, how well you are paying attention, I guess. I know, because I always tell you during the break, Brian, nobody pays attention to anything I say. And you agree. <laughs> and now it looks like the, uh, the viewers agree. That's right. <laughs> but, but we'll see. In the meantime, we what are you to... doing for Christmas? Where are you going? Are you guys going to no, stay Dana, at home? Actually, Dana is going up to see her father. In and San Francisco. Not? No, I've got to do – I'm on in cat San duty. San Francisco? I thought he lived in Oregon. They do. They're coming down to the uh, the oh, Bay Area halfway. to visit uh, Dana's sister. So we were both going to fly up there. He's 99, by the way. Wow. And he'll be 100 uh, in July. Uh, I'm going to stay and do cat duty. We were both going to go, but it, this is it's simpler. I've got uh, – it's like watching three kids. You know, you, you want to hire a babysitter or somebody, but uh, you, you put it this way, Tiger. It would be like asking somebody to watch Five Isaacs. Oh my goodness! Hey, cats are that hard. Well, these cats are these are special needs cats. Yeah, you'd think they just sleep all day, right? And and what do they and, do? and and do nothing. Trust me, it's like running a daycare center. <laughs> so that's what uh, I'll be. So I'll be alone for Christmas with the cats, John. Oh, I'm alone for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you can count on that. <laughs> Nobody's gotten your answer yet. No, no but no I has. I found it. Oh, you, I so you know, so you know the name. I know the name. All right. Yeah. So I I feel smart right now. Well, we'll come up with another question after the break if no one gets it before the sure. break. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. In well, the meantime, so, got to keep the show rolling. Yeah. Well, if somebody so, wants just wants to ask us, Brian, what was the number again? Yes. Well, uh, by phone, a question by phone is eight five five four two four nine eight two five. Also, John, that's John at GardenAmerica dot com, or right there on Facebook Live. Tiger, do you guys still have poinsettias? Yes, at we your do. Store? Yes, because you we were do. telling during the first hour, you were mentioning that it's kind of late to be buying a Christmas Christmas tree, even though some people buy those like the night before they that, put them some up. Some people, that's their tradition. Yeah, the night they, before, that, or or that Santa brings the tree. Oh, that's right. You, huh? you know, you're going to be in a new house, yeah. so you can uh, start some new traditions. Right. You right. have a chimney. 
I have a chimney. Nice. Uh, we have Charles on the line, and <laughs> okay. he has the right answer. Okay, let's go to uh, the telephone, uh, 855-424-9825. Charles is online, and Charles believes he has the answer. Hey, Charles, welcome to the show. What is the answer to the question, and uh, where are you calling from, my friend? Uh, San Luis Obispo. All right, buddy. What is the answer to our question? It was hard to find, but uh, Archibald Menzies. That's right. That That's exactly correct. right. Charles, congratulations. Good old Archie. Well, I wish I had some, you know, congratulatory music here. <laughs> anyway, uh, tell him what he won, John. Well, Charles is going to win a, uh, the Who Knows the Rose game, and I'll mail that out on Monday, so you'll have it in plenty of time for everyone to play around the Christmas tree on the, <laughs> the following Monday. But um, Charles needs to hold on the line and make sure that he gives his now, uh, address. And Well, now, last week we, we had him email you the address. Do you want him to do – which way do you want to go this time? And can you email me the address? Is that uh, easy for you, Charles? Sure. Okay, just send it to john at gardenamerica.com, and I'll make sure that I send I it out. I will do so. Okay, Charles, congratulations. Right, Sam yeah. Lewis Obispo, that's john at gardenamerica.com. Okay, there's one down, there's one a, to go. There's a lot of smart people in San Luis Obispo. Yeah, it is. It's uh, one of the uh, the smarter plant capitals of the world. Right. Now, we have to come up with a another question for the second game because, okay. obviously, since he gave the answer yes. out on air. I know. Everybody, <laughs> everybody knows what it is. Now, this will be fair for those that are just joining us on Facebook Live as well. Yeah, uh, but you know what we have. But a... you've got to be ready to go on Facebook because we're going to make it easy next. Right. Time. So uh, we're going to take a break right now. So uh, if you do have a thinking cap around, put it on. We're going to come back and ask you a question, and then resume the show with your questions and comments on Facebook Live or John at GardenAmerica dot com. So a question coming up after the break. Tiger Palafox. I'm Brian Maine. John Bagnasco. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Garden America live on Facebook and uh, boy streaming throughout the entire world. Biz Talk Radio coming right back. Do you have insects on your roses? Do you have boars damaging your trees and shrubs due to stress or the drought? This is Tiger Palafox with Garden America Radio. Fertilome Tree and Shrub Drench is a great product that will give you season-long protection against many insects. Fertilome Tree and Shrub Drench can act as a preventer or a curative for insects that suck, chew, or bore on your plants. This may be the easiest product to use. Simply measure, mix in a bucket, and pour around the base of the tree. One application can last up to a full year. Protect your trees with Fertilome Tree and Shrub Drench. Find it at your local independent nursery or Fertilome.com. It's bare root fruit tree season, and you probably have a million questions. Which fruits will grow well here? What are the tastiest fruits? How do I care for them? The answers, they're just a click away with the informative fruit tube videos at DaveWilson.com. That's Dave Wilson Nursery, the nation's largest grower of fruit trees for the backyard garden. They have planting tips, taste test results, and links to nurseries in your area that carry Dave Wilson fruit trees. Your harvest to better health begins at Dave Wilson. Are you married? Do you and your husband both have term life insurance? If you both don't, you should. You have a lot to protect. Call now, get a free quote for your husband, and while you're at it, get a quote for yourself too. Because you both need term life insurance. Call now. 800-915-9658. 800-915-9658. 800-915-9658. Rates are at all-time lows. We'll shop over 30 top-rated companies to get you the best possible rates. Term life insurance, it's the perfect way to protect the quality of your family's lifestyle. You and your husband both need term life insurance, so call now for a free quote for the both of you. 800-915-9658. 800-915-9658. 800-915-9658. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill for 
pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-521-9579 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-521-9579 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-521-9579. That's 1-800-521-9579. Again, 1-800-521-9579. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 888-785-0618. 888-785-0618. That's 888-785-0618. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com. It is Garden America, Saturday morning. I guess if you're back east, it is uh, Saturday afternoon. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Festivus for the rest of us. Whatever you celebrate, we're glad that you're with us uh, this morning here. Uh, Tiger, uh, John, I'm Brian, and we've got a question coming up for those that want to uh, try to win this game. Yeah, you know, we also, John, on Facebook uh, complimented the studio, Brian. Well, thank you, John. And Appreciate that. With that compliment, I thought, you know. What did you, what did I, you well, think? Well, I looked at the picture and I thought, <laughs> Nothing. it is a nice studio, but where's the Christmas decorations? Oh, yeah. You know, there's no tree. There's, there's no, no wreath, lights. There's no, no wreath. Yeah. You wouldn't know what time of year it was if you were just watching for the first time. Exactly. Would you? No. Anyway, I, that's a good shot of you, John. i got to make sure John's in all these shots. He tends to come and go in, in these camera Well, you know angles. what? My uh, Facebook is just static. It's not moving. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. Thus the frustration. Okay, we, we have one more game to give away. I want to give yeah. you a chance to win that game with right. a, an easy question. This will be easier. Uh, our good friend, Ping Lim. Ping is a, one of the top rose breeders in the world. And uh, he now is a breeder for Altman Plants in Vista, California. Uh, the first person to type in on Facebook any rose that Ping has bred will win the game. You think that's All an right. easy question? Yeah, no. Oh, it's easy to look up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so any rose that, that he's had uh, anything to do with as that far as... he is bred, personally bred. Okay, spell... So the, any rose p- bred spell, by his, spell his name for people. Ping? Yeah, what? Well, P-I-N-G. Right. And? Lim? Go L-I-M. Ahead. L-I-M. Ping Lim. Right. Ping... I make sure there's no B in there. Ping Lim. L-I-M. No, no, that's if you're out on one. Okay. So look up any rose that he has bred or has uh, had anything to do with as far as being responsible for uh, introducing it to the general public. Is that right, John? That's right. Okay, and type that in on Facebook. We'll be uh, keeping track, and we'll be watching. Ah. <laughs> Speaking of roses, um, uh, Becky Hook just joined Facebook, who uh, has a rose nursery in France. Really? Yeah, and grows roses uh, uh what we call old garden roses or heirloom roses, mm-hmm. heritage roses. Mm-hmm. And one of the most knowledgeable people in old roses that I've ever met. Maybe she's going to answer the question. <laughs> well, I don't know what you she knows it. about modern roses or if she knows Ping, but if she does, she's she is welcome to, to guess. But then we've got to mail this off to France. I don't know. <laughs> hey, another thing on the rose topic and goes kind of across the board, John, what do you think with this, I would say, very abnormal weather cycle that we're having where we haven't had almost or we had zero rain 
Uh-huh. We're having a way above average temperatures during the daytime right now. For those deciduous plants like roses, stone fruits, things like that, what are the effects that we see later on those plants? Because I know, for instance, they tell you make sure your roses go dormant if you can, you know, because next year they give you bigger blossoms and perform better and things. So they want that rest period. But when it, you just simply can't rest a plant, is the next year a less than stellar year for for all of that stuff? That's a really good question. Um, I was surprised looking out at the roses in my yard yesterday that these are some of the nicest blooms I've had all year. I'm still blooming, too. I mean, too. they're spectacular. Huge flowers really look good. And they're spectacular. Oh, that's it's a good word. It is a good have word. have to use that. <laughs> but but uh, you're but right. But the problem is going to be for uh, when do you when do you get your do you get bare root roses? Yeah, we get them in right now. Right so now. so we're getting so, in. So the problem that. is if it hasn't been cold enough in the fields, they don't go completely dormant. Right. And it's more difficult to transplant. So you may have more loss when you go to replant those roses, but um but then they really, the following spring, do they perform as good? They really should go dormant in order to do their best. And there are ways you can make them go dormant. For instance, you can spray with... Um, Withhold water. <laughs> uh, well, that'll Shop, help. Shop no, you can that stop funny. watering. That'll help. Make sure you don't cut the flowers off. Let them set hips. Right. But I'm, I'm trying to think. My mind just went blank. What is the spray that you use... To knock all the leaves off the roses. Knock all the leaves. Oh, yeah, it's I the same know. thing they use for olives. Oh, florel. Florel. The fruit. The fruit. Right. Where they. Yeah. Yeah. You can spray your roses with florel. It'll knock all the leaves off. And some people do that, um, even in a normal year. If you've got climbing roses or roses with a lot of leaves that mm -hmm. you can't pull them all off, they'll just spray with florel. Oh. And then that'll save energy for the next coming season. Well, it sends it. It tells them to go dormant, right. rest. They don't need to rest that long, really. No. Um, most roses will do well in Southern California, where we are, except for some of the colder, more European type. I've got a very nice varieties. bloom on a rose right now. I should have taken a picture of it. That would last Beautiful. longer. <laughs> <laughs> We're back hey, to we, second grade. We have a winner. We have a winner. Yeah, okay, on our Facebook. Yeah, who, who is the name? Janice Miles. And she picked Macy's Pride. And that rose by Ping is a yellow hybrid. T uh, what was it? Um, a yellow. I can't. I don't know. It just says New England's best shrub in 2005. Oh, it's a shrub then. Yeah. A shrub it's a rose. shrub rose from, from Ping. So congratulations, Janice. We'll send a note to you and get your info. And. Send off your wonderful who knows the rose. You game. know now. How did we get uh, the Facebook winner's address last week? Uh, Jan, if you send me an email to John at GardenAmerica dot com, um, but I happen to have her address anyway. Oh, but, okay. But it'll, <laughs> it'll just just be easier. Well, congratulations, well, Jan. Jan's a big supporter of the uh, Save the Roses uh, auction mm -hmm. every year, and. Uh, uh, some of the roses that you auctioned off this year were roses she won. Very good. Right. And I have to tell you, we were talking about how much people know about roses. Ping is a good friend of mine. And if I started writing down all the roses that he bred. It would take you five years. It wouldn't take me five years, but I never would have thought of Macy's Pride, ever. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So I'm very impressed that Jan won that. She should get a bonus <laughs> prize, I guess, for that one. Anyway, right. congratulations to our winners. I think it was Chuck or Charles from San Luis Obispo. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Jan from Brentwood, California. Brentwood, California. So congratulations. I think we should try to come up with something to give away each week if we can or every other week or something. Oh, yeah, we should. It's, it's fun. To get you know what? Involved. I can come up with the prizes if you and Tiger will be responsible for mailing them out. <laughs> That's always the hard part. Yeah, yeah, but you've done such a good job. Yeah. Why would I want to spoil what, you, what you've nourished and, and, and what you've developed? I mean, when a running back takes five plays and takes the ball down the field, do you really want to give it to someone else, John, to put right. it in the end zone? You know what? He's no. right. You give it to that running back. You know what? <laughs> That's exactly we, right. You're on we, a roll, John. We have another question, though, from Rick. All right, and Rick. 
it is how hard is it to start Japanese maples from cuttings and do you do it? And you're so, going to answer that after the break, aren't you? Exactly. Very good, Rick. Keep those questions coming in for the rest of you on Facebook Live. Questions, comments, we'd love to hear from you. You can also try John at GardenAmerica.com as we approach 30 minutes after the hour. To our friends on the East Coast, we say good afternoon. The rest of us, it is still a good Saturday morning. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Thank you for tuning in to Garden America. Going to take a break. We are coming right back. Stay with us. Biz Talk Radio is now available on Amazon Echo. Just add the Biz Talk Radio skills, then ask Alexa for the latest business news. You'll instantly get live, relevant information from the best business source. Biz Talk Radio. Alexa, open Biz Talk Market Tips. Do you owe $10,000 or more on at least two federal student loans? Then you may qualify for new programs offered by the Department of Education. These programs can reduce your interest, lower your payments, and possibly qualify you for loan forgiveness. If you have $10,000 or more and at least two federal student loans and currently not in school, you may qualify for one of these programs. Call now to check your eligibility. Student loan advisors are standing by to help you determine if you qualify for these new programs. They can help you reduce your interest, lower your payment, and even forgive a portion of your student loan debt. Take control of your financial future. Make this free five-minute free call now to Nationwide Student Loans and learn how you can reduce your student loan debt. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. 800-439-1588. A message from DAV to returning veterans. Thank you for doing your duty and doing our bidding. Thank you for standing up and not backing down. Thank you for putting yourself in harm's way and putting your buddies' lives ahead of your own. Thank you for defending our freedom and displaying your honor. DAV thanks all veterans by fighting to get them the benefits and support they were promised. Visit DAV.org for free help. And again, thank you. Hi, I'm Joan London. If you're worried about your parent or loved one living alone, like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call a place for mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. Finding an apartment that was on the courtyard with the view of the trees, the view of the ducks, the stream, the creek, all of that, that was what I needed. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. Here's the number. To speak to a local senior living advisor, call a place for mom at 800-506-0320. That's 800-506-0320. A place for mom is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. To speak to a local senior living advisor, call a place for mom at 800-506-0320. That's 800-506-0320. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-595-6619. That's 800-595-6619. Again, 800-595-6619. 6619. National Funding Group has just released $100 million in easy access small business funding to businesses that gross at least $100,000 a year. You can have fast access up to $500,000 in new business capital in as little as 48 hours. Think about the ways you could grow your business if you had up to a half a million dollar cash infusion. 
Call a NFG funding expert now. The process is easy. It only takes about five minutes. Then our management-owned lending team looks at your application for a fast approval. You can get 100% funded in about two days. If you need up to $500,000 in working capital to run your business and you gross at least $100,000 a year, call NFG and apply today. 800-296-1564. 800-296-1564. That's 800-296-1564. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825 or john at gardenamerica.com. Back here on your uh, Saturday. Thank you so much for joining us at about uh, 35 minutes after the hour. Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. Uh, questions at john at com, or as most people prefer these days, right there on Facebook Live. And uh, we do have a question, right, Tiger? Or do we? We, we have a question. Well, leading into the break, you are going to address something. What was I thinking about? Wow. <laughs> I know what it is, but I'm not telling you. Guys. Of all the people to remember, <laughs> he remembered. Of all the people to remember, it was John. It's but good good it, thing you, I want to play this uh, memory game with you guys. <laughs> you know what? It, it was a great tease too. <laughs> Whoa! What was it now? You, I you, you had me going. Yes, Rick I, from Grants Pass, Oregon. Oh, no, there we, we go. Wanted to know uh, how to start Japanese maples from cuttings, and can it be done? And that's because I remember asking the question, but then John was the one that was going to answer it because I definitely have not started Japanese maples from cuttings. Good thing John is here today. Well, Japanese maples are not as big in Southern California because of the heat. Mm -hmm. They just don't do as well as they do in areas like Northern California or Oregon. And Oregon's when, and when we say heat, we want to be specific in the sense they, they like winter weather because they can tolerate the heat. They just need that well, cold. The, the it doesn't get th- cold enough down here. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not the cold so much with Japanese maples. With other maples, it is. Mm. But they, they don't like um, the salt in the soil. Mm-hmm. By summertime, every Japanese maple in Southern California has burned, burned. edges on the leaves. Too acidic. And you don't ha- No, it's too alkaline. Alkaline, I mean, mm. sorry, yes. But you don't have that up in uh, uh, Northern California. Or Sacramento. Or... or uh, Oregon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can, there's a, many, many hundreds of cultivars of Japanese maples, and to get the same maple, it has to either be started from a cutting, or some wheat varieties are actually grafted onto seedling rootstock. Mm-hmm. So, but if it's one you want to try with cuttings, it's really not that difficult to do. You make the cuttings, pull off the bottom leaves, dip the cutting in a rooting hormone and then stick it in a container that's half perlite and half uh, peat moss, and then stick a Coke bottle over the top of it, you know, cut out the bottom. And you create your own microclimate. Yeah. Um, and then I don't you can know do that any time of year? I don't know if you can do it in the winter. I've yeah. never done it in the winter, but I'm thinking that it might work. Uh, if you wanted to try it, it's not going to hurt anything. Rick mentions that it's 32 degrees up there in Grants Pass today. Wow. <laughs> uh, so, you know... Uh, you want to take the cuttings from the ends of the branches. You all, always want smaller cuttings uh, and definitely dip them in the rooting hormone, but they might root and be ready for spring. Another way you can do it is by air layering. Uh, air layering works really well, and you do that right on the plant, and then once the roots have filled up the uh, the little mossy area where you've mm-hmm. done your air layering, you can just put that right in a container. Okay, Rick, there you go. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. So the answer is yes, and that's how to do it. A couple of two, of, uh, two or three ways. one of my favorite plants growing up, Japanese maple. Really? And, yeah, and I still love them, but it's just one of those love-hates because what, I live in what San drew Diego. You to, what drew you to it? They're beautiful. Yeah. They I mean, really just are. The, just the, and and I, there's a lot of varieties, like you mentioned. and The cut-leaf varieties are the ones oh. that are the... 
the ones that really attract people and yeah. those are horrible down here <laughs> yeah oh gosh they look so miserable you might as they're well just nice grow for a about weed. six weeks in the spring and that's yeah it. but it, the look of them the the variations they're graceful they're and, so graceful and just the compact nature that the tree has um it's always been something that i whenever i've seen it in a landscape uh -huh. it, in, it inspires that landscape because hmm. it's definitely one of those stand out doesn't need anything else around it to be looking amazing anything else around it would take away from its own beauty yeah yeah exactly so i've that's my favorite plant by far is the japanese maple i just wish i could grow them <laughs> better i could they'll grow but it'd be better if they were nice looking they look good for six weeks as john said right yeah yeah that that's about it there is a way that um the you know brian you mentioned the acidity in the soil and the more acid you make the soil, the longer they stay green. So if you treat them like an azalea or a camellia here in Southern California, they'll look nicer for a longer period of time. It's surprising they still grow. Right. Even though the leaves are all burned up. Well, well, that's the funniest thing. People bring them in and they say there's a problem with it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what's funny is that it, you there is a problem. San Diego, but that's it's your still problem. <laughs> pushing out new growth. Yeah, exactly. It's with, trying. So so it, it keeps growing. Well, they're very I tenacious just, then, aren't they? Despite yeah. all everything well, it has going against it. Well, kind of like what I was hinting at when John mentioned the problem is the heat is that, but they actually can grow in quite hot regions. I mean, Stockton, California, Sacramento. Those all get 90, very 100 Chico. degree temperatures. Yeah, very hot And the there. Japanese maples, you'll go up there and they still look pretty, but that's also because they get 20 inches of rain and they right. don't rely on city water all the time. And, you know, they they do go dormant in the wintertime because it does drop down into the 30s in those regions hmm. as well. So, you know, it, it's a great plant. So, I, yeah, I think we answered Rick's questions when it comes to – being able to graft them and propagate them, have some fun with the Japanese maples up there in Oregon. You know, I'm thinking that you can, um, I guess maybe we really should not be surprised that they do well, even though the leaves burn, because I was just thinking of another plant that does really well in Southern California and the leaves burn because of the salt and it's avocados. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every single avocado this time of year will have burned leaves on it and there's avocado trees everywhere and yeah. people people come in again same thing what's come wrong into the nursery and they're like oh it just happened it two weeks and this is it's right. looking horrible and i'm like yeah but look at the tips it's pushing out the new growth already yeah you know and that's just it's just what it looks like right, right. now right oh are there any avocado trees that do better than others in this in this climate uh, i i tend to see them the little cotto looking better than really? most other ones during this time of year but that could just be maybe a nursery thing but well there's dwarf avocados you can grow in containers like maybe little cattle little or, cattle. or um, holiday holiday and if you grow those in large containers you can control the watering so you can leach the salt out of the soil sure. and they're going to look a little bit better but once they're in the ground especially in a dry year like we've had this year there's been no rain to leach the salt out of the soil we had, we started off the year though with a lot of rain, then just boom. Right, yeah. Avocados looked everything. Everything in Southern looked California good. looked good. Yeah. So, um, another thing in the news this week, speaking of the trees in the rain, was the study that the California Forestry Department did, and they, because of the wildfires and because of the drought, they want to start thinning out forest because they've gotten so dense because of protection and everything else. Right that they, they're saying that's contributing to the overall health of the forest because they have too many trees, which all the trees become weak, which then can in, get invaded by a beetle or disease or mm -hmm. something. But if they thin the forest, that at least gives the trees that are in there a opportunity to fight off some of the disease, the beetle and things like that. So we have so too many trees. They're saying we have too many trees densely populating areas and it's just because they've been so protected for so long. So the forestry department's going in, you know, one of the things for next year is going to start to push and thinning out some of these forests to hopefully bring the forest health back up. Does that mean we're going to have more paper next year? Why not? We're, they're going to do away with emails to be able to <laughs> absorb it and everybody's going to have to start sending letters again. You know, it's funny how people, <laughs> how people, uh, you know, use email more than anything now. And the phone's kind of like oh, yeah. secondary. Oh, yeah. But but reverse that. Can you imagine if back in the 1800s they developed email? 
And so for 100 years, everyone is just, you know, typing and, and using uh, forms of communication that way. And then 20 years ago, somebody says, hey, I developed a telephone. <laughs> you can actually talk to people. You can talk to them? Yeah. That... Everybody would be talking to everybody. Right. They'd say, I don't want to type. I want to talk. And it's just the opposite. People mm -hmm. would rather text mm -hmm. than, than call. I think yep. that's an interesting dichotomy there. Yeah, it goes back and forth. Goes talking, back, yeah. talking, writing, talking, writing. Yeah. Well, if you email or text somebody, you don't have to answer back. Right. When you're talking to them, they, ex it. they expect an answer. That's my excuse to John all the time. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't, yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> I didn't get the email, John. Sorry. <laughs> John's doing his research right now, I can tell. He's got that look on his face. Oh. <laughs> do you want to know what I'm trying to do? It looks like you're looking at the Facebook video. I'm trying, like to, looking trying at to get back on Facebook. <laughs> look, he, the expression on his face is like he's looking at sites that he shouldn't be well, looking at. I'm looking at what I'm wearing, and so I know that that's the wrong face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's looking at previous shows. Yeah. Where I am. I'm dizzy. What are we going to do with him? Where do we, we go? Where would yeah. we get him? Yeah. Put it back. It says click for more. So yeah, that's what you want to do. Click for more, and it should expand the page, oh. and then you'll see all the comments. Yeah. And you're just in time, John, because we're going to take a break. <laughs> we have one more segment coming up, uh, questions, comments, Facebook Live. We would appreciate that. John at GardenAmerica.com. Or if you do want to pick up the phone and call us, especially after that little conversation about the telephone, 855-424-9825. I'm Brian Maine. John Vagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Fox. This is Garden America coming right back. Stay with us. This is Joe Lample from Growing a Greener World. With the environment in mind, I recommend Melorganite Organic Nitrogen Fertilizer for all your growing needs. From plants to people, active growth requires energy, nutrients, and a balanced diet. Nutrient-rich Melorganite feeds the soil and plants for up to three months. The organic nitrogen is slow release and won't burn plants even during hot, dry weather. Trust the fertilizer proven effective for 90 years. Melorganite, for better results naturally. Visit Melorganite.com for a garden center near you. Do you have a small yard and think you don't have the room for fruit trees? Well, think again. Dave Wilson Nursery wants to show you how to grow great-tasting fruits like peaches, apples, pluots, and much more in small areas, even in patio containers, too. It's called Backyard Orchard Culture. You get step-by-step -step information via the fruit tube videos at DaveWilson.com. That's where you'll find the closest nursery to you that carries Dave Wilson's quality fruit trees. Start the backyard orchard of your dreams at DaveWilson.com. If you're suffering from hearing loss, stay tuned for a special offer from the makers of Listen Clear, a revolutionary hearing aid breakthrough designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. Right now, you can try Listen Clear hearing aids absolutely free for 45 days. You can also qualify for free shipping and free batteries for life. Listen Clear hearing aids are so lightweight and comfortable, you can wear them all day long. They're practically invisible, too so others won't even notice you're wearing them. And the best part is, you'll be able to hear almost everything, everywhere. So do something about your hearing loss. Call Listen Clear now to get started with your 45-day risk-free hearing aid trial. This special offer won't be available for long, so call Listen Clear now. 800-716-4650. 800-716-4650. 800-716-4650. We're here 24 hours a day to help. That's 800-716-4650. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly, because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-711-6812 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-711-6812. Again, that's 800-711-6812. Hey, travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right. 
Call, because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. 855-325-1769. 855-325-1769. That's 855-325-1769. Do you need a car? Been shopping only to be turned down because of bad credit, low credit, no credit, bankruptcy, or divorce? Guess what? Today's your lucky day. Because now you can buy a car, truck, or SUV, just about any vehicle. It's true. Bad credit doesn't matter. No credit doesn't matter. Bankruptcy or divorce, it just doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, your job is your ticket to your new vehicle. We're Auto Credit Express, and we've helped thousands of people just like you. Antonio H. told us, great company, got me connected, and the day I went in, I drove off in the car I wanted. 100% worth your time. Need a car? Get started now and drive off as early as today. Just go to 11ignoremyscore.com right now. That's www.11ignoremyscore.com. Auto financing the easy way. 11ignoremyscore.com. Get started today. Auto financing the easy way. Biz Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Garden America Radio Show with Brian, John, and Tiger. The phone lines are open right now at 855-424-9825. That's 855-424-9825. Or john at gardenamerica.com. It is Garden America, and it is our uh, final segment, guys. We're going to make it through this. John's uh, fighting through and not feeling too well. He'll be able to go home and relax. And uh, we'll go from there. Facebook Live still for the next uh, several minutes, 855-424-9825. Also, john at gardenamerica.com with your questions and comments. You know what's really good for a cold is lemongrass tea. Lemongrass tea? Yeah, lemongrass tea. It's, you know, it's, it's a giant herbal grass. I mean, this, this it almost looks like a Mexican feather, not a Mexican feather grass, the uh, penicetum, uh, just the basic green penicetum. It gets about three and a half feet tall, four and a half feet wide, this big mountain of grass. Really? And the blades are very serrated. So if you kind of rub your hand through them, it actually cut your hand a little bit, kind of wow. like a paper cut. But what you do is you pull some of the foliage off, steep it in some tea, Put a little bit of honey in it, and that's supposed to be really good when you have a cold or sore throat. Lemongrass is hard to find in garden centers because it can only be propagated by division, right? Yeah, right. Where, where other grasses, they can grow from seed. Seed. Yeah. Right. But So is that, are you going to do that, John, take his advice? No. no he doesn't no. have any lemongrass, probably. I don't. My neighbor <laughs> does, though. Oh, well, there you go. I was... Um, that reminds me of a story I heard once. I love it when you tell stories. I don't know if it's true, though. But at the time, I thought it was true. Does it start out with once upon a time? No, it's, uh, there's a lot of herbs mentioned in the Bible. Yes. And there's a scripture that says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be made clean. Uh, and I'm not sure where it's from. But uh, and hyssop is always sold as an herb. Uh, it used to be, uh, you go into any herb uh, department in a garden center and you'd find hyssop. It's kind of a nice ornamental plant, too. But science has never found any uh, medicinal value in hyssop. Hmm. And so it seemed odd that th that was uh, a scriptural reference to almost a healing-type property. Hmm. And then the way I heard this story, and again, I don't know if it's true, because as you get old, you forget sources of things. Yes. But... Um, I heard that they discovered a mold growing on the leaves of hyssop that had penicillin-type properties or produced penicillin. 
and uh, and so they're therefore would you have the medicinal quality to it. Interesting. Yeah. You think that's Old Testament? That scriptures from yeah, the Old Testament. Right. I'm not sure where it sounds like Psalms or. I'm I'm sure we have lots of listeners out there who know no, right exactly away. what we're talking and, about and are thinking, you heathen, this <laughs> comes from here. <laughs> Maybe I'll look that uh, up while Tiger tells us uh, his. You know, uh, I wanted to caller, mention Bob earlier we were talking with about. a question about a pineapple. Okay, let's go to the phones. We've got a, a question. Uh, All right. 855. I'll, I'll put my story on hold. Okay, right 855-424-9825. Who do we have with us? And uh, welcome to the show. You're on Hello? the air. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Oh, uh, this is Bob from Napomo, California. Hello, Bob. What's going on? Uh, about probably four months ago or so, I went online and saw how to take a pineapple, cut it, and you take all the green off till like the roots are showing, and you plant it, which I did, and I water like it said, and it, it's still perfectly green, but it has not grown not even a centimeter. But it's not dead because all the leaves are green. Yeah, it probably won't grow much during the winter. Um, pineapples are in the bromeliad family, and a lot of bromeliads are uh, epiphytes. You know, they don't even grow in soil; they just grow up in trees. So they can continue to live for for quite a while. Now, a pineapple is a terrestrial bromeliad, so it does need to grow in the ground. But you need to make sure that the soil drains really well, um, almost a sandy type mix or something with a lot of perlite, so that that basal area, which is going to develop the roots, doesn't rot. Um, and it probably will take most of the winter. Uh, it will just sit there, but it'll start to slowly put out roots, and then in the spring it should take off. Okay, how long will it take to get the pineapple? Usually takes two years. Two and years? Yeah. Two years. Two right. years. Yeah. And then when it uh, does... To get one pineapple? Yes, yep. to get one pineapple. <laughs> he's, not, he's not happy with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to start growing them hey, in your I backyard thought... and think you're going to sell them at the local market and make money. No. So... Oh, no, no, I eat a lot of pi fresh pineapple in my yeah. smoothies. Yeah. So I figured I'd grow one. I didn't realize it's going to take two years to make one. How come, <laughs> how come so long? Well, be, mainly because we're here in California. Mm -hmm. It would not take quite as long if you were in a tropical climate. Or a greenhouse. Or in a greenhouse, right. Yeah, so well, if you if it's something that you were, if it's something that you wanted to propagate because you use it a lot, you might think about investing in not even a full-size greenhouse. You can just make one of those little hot houses that sits two feet above the soil and as long as you control the environment then the pineapples grow much quicker i think yeah i think they turn around pretty quick for hawaii which is their ideal and months yeah. is there around they there. serve if you go to hawaii they serve pineapple with everything yeah you go to mcdonald's no matter what you order there's a slice of pineapple with it yeah so, so you know it's because their turnaround yeah, in their I, love environment pineapple. So I mean you know i mean i bought one of those slicers and I eat them in my smoothies, but I mean, what I did was I put a stake with the level so I could see it, how much it grows. Mm. I mean, it hasn't grown zero at all. <laughs> you know, like in like in like four months. Yeah. No, well, we're not we're not laughing at you. We're laughing okay. with you. Yeah, so. you can always move to uh, oh. Southern Florida or Hawaii, and you'll get quicker growth. Or but, just be patient. But otherwise, yeah, just be just be patient. And make sure you keep it warm during yeah, the winter. Me. Don't let it get cold. Yeah, during keep it the warm. Yeah, good, good, good point. So, what should I do with the, during the winter? Take it inside or just yeah, cover it? Yeah, it would best. be best to grow it in a a nice, uh, a large size container. Maybe five gallon would be big enough. And then during the winter, just bring it indoors. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you for the phone call. Okay, well, thank you. Brett. You betcha. We're out of time. Hey, okay. that's going to do it, guys, uh, until next week. So, hey, Psalm 51.7 is where that scripture <laughs> Psalm 51.7. Right. It makes Burst a lot of sense. Up and I shall be clean. Right. Okay, thank you. That's the Bible quote of the week, and John will have more of those next week <laughs> along with the quote of the week.
Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you watching on Facebook Live and uh, tuning in wherever you are here uh, from BizTalk Radio. Yeah, Merry Until, Christmas uh, to everybody. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever you celebrate, we do appreciate you tuning in. And we will get back and do it again uh, next week here, Facebook Live. And, of course, any questions right there on Facebook Live or John at GardenAmerica.com. Until then, have a great week and get growing America. Take care. The opinions you hear on Biz Talk Radio are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of this station, Biz Talk Radio, its management, or advertisers. The information on Biz Talk Radio does not constitute a recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or service. If you have any questions about Biz Talk Radio, contact us at 817-274-1609 or at biztalkradio.com. Biz Talk Radio. USA Radio News with Ron Taylor. The United States is proud to call Mexico its partner in targeting this threat in production and distribution networks, not only throughout Mexico and the United States, but throughout Central America. Together, we can be leaders in the entire region to combat this threat. Fighting the opioid crisis is one of the Trump administration's top priorities. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen explaining the U.S. has multiple departments committed to working with the government of Mexico to end the crisis. Officials with the Department of Homeland Security and the Justice Department met this week for talks with their...